how authoritative I was because the government commissioned me to kill. A soldier is a licensed killer how about you? by the constitution to protect the welfare, to protect the sovereignty, to protect the resources a soldier must kill. I was in that system, but I realized all young people are picking at me. I realize that sometimes killing has no meaning. That's why this text that I read to you today is very, very important. It's special because we will go through a lot of persecution in our life. Life is not simple. When a mother is happy, young player, you're married now, you have a mask. But as God told Eve, the pains that you've never felt before will be the pains during childbirth. That's the type of pain that I saw in Bougainville. It takes a man of substance. It takes a leader of substance to understand, to differentiate what power and what authority is, what peace is, what love and freedom is, and to jail. And to jail. In the name of Jesus, you here sitting here today are the first to witness my public preaching in Bougainville. Amen. 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 You're blessed. You're blessed because I am blessed. I am blessed because you are blessed. Because of Jesus. Because God told us that if you're persecuted, don't worry about it because God, Jesus has already guaranteed us a place in heaven. That's the promise. That promise he will never ever forsake us. So I was wounded in Panguna. You know, today, as I speak today, in Panguna, right at Guava Village, where everything happens around Francis Honor. It's all around at Guava. Mr. Blong Lolovo, August 24, 1994, 1994, I had my CP at Lolovo. The government and the Pius Binti said, Go na Kisim Panguna. The general at that time, General Dadimo, Bob Dadimo, when we come them to Kennel, there was a kennel at that time. Operations Dynamo, okay, Operations Dynamo, it's about securing Panguna, and I want you to name that Operations High Speed One. How you do it, I don't care. In 48 hours, I want Panguna secure. Okay, no problem, I'm more than it. A company, I moved them on SP Highway at night, as close as possible. I dropped them off at Pang, uh, Pakia Gap, Oliver Bodygon Table Morone, if you're familiar with that place, or Holly Morone before I moved them down to Camp 10. B Company, I moved them up to Coupe by helicopter. 15 helicopter trips, in and out, in and out, in and out. I moved them up to Coupe. And then I specifically ordered B Company to leave Coupe and come down, capture and hold Guava Village. And D Company, I moved them by road. Now all by go hold him inside Long Mine Pit yet. Inside Long Mine Pit. So I held them there. So they were holding that place. Now me and me operate out from Lolobo. I operate out from Lolobo. So it was a military operation, really precision well. What happened at uh, Guava is an act of God. Wampla Major, Long Sarova Village, Central Province, Lake Kekebogi, Henry. And sit down long, place long, clear place long, Guava. Walk long, talk talk long, radio stop. Now, BRL stop on top of the mountain. 
on le put him straight, point to two long head blowing, I'll shoot him in. You put him down, young plus all the blowing him, sit down close to the line, he like color panther blowing, boss blowing him, nerve block bullet. So we lost two. Then boss man and me put down chaos. The soldiers were completely out of the Novak leader. I was at Loloho and then I got a message message that, that the boss man is out. Don't let him move along. Kupei come down and boss man will kill him plus. So 24th of August 1994, I had no choice. We tried all sorts of things, so I flew up. I flew up on the 25th, assess the situation. We go back along Loloho. We kiss him helicopter, we straight him all machine gun, all hand bomb, all something, and then I flew up on the 26th of August to pick up the bodies. So time helicopter will go, 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 go around close to now, now we'll be hurrying, open up camp. I'll shoot him helicopter, I'll shoot him nerve a gun up on me, now I'll injure me same time. You know, that bullet could have got me in my head, in my chest, or my right hand, or anyway, it took my left hand. Why my left hand? Because I went, me go forward, sit down, close to long pilot now, me look him all man, runway number, now me go, get me a long hop, shoot long hop, now gun up on me, suppose long shoot you, now got gun it jam, now me like, I think that long, gun up on me, now I'll open up the blood, now shoot him, long hop on shooting pilot, uh, helicopter. They shot the generator of the helicopter. So we had to fly, abandon the, the mission. We came down and we crashed the helicopter near Arawa Hospital. At the same time, all ground troops, D company, all mobilizing on top, uh, connect one time all boy, Long Guava, and we were able to extract the soldiers out and take the two dead bodies out. So I was injured badly, and uh, one thing happened that night, on the 26th. It's a very, very moving story. It's a very moving story. On the 26th of August, we had a field hospital at 6 and 14 at Arava. We sleep up, and my schoolmate from Sopos Island, Kendall Frank Tarawa, I'm one of them Garrett's, Dennis Garrett's. Yeah, Dennis is the pilot who flies me around, Bogan William. And this doctor I went to school at Sugiri is one of the best surgeons in the army. He also follows me everywhere I go because they believe in me. So he operated me that night. I was unconscious and I was asleep. I was asleep. About two o'clock, all can can travel, put him on body blow me and take effect and me feeling pain. And when I started to roll down and around, and I had this very beautiful people singing. As usual, Bougainvilleans and dark, glossy, black people. Me look look at it long better. Plan your teeth or smile that was from sixteen. Many years later, I realized that there were seven day Adventist church women from Roma Mission. Amen? Amen. They came. They heard that I was injured. We had, I had my twice a really nice gentleman called Job Casa. He's from Shipping. He's a seven day Adventist. My company, twice a I'm to Kennel, Kennel, please, Sabbath now. Can you give us seven day Adventist soldiers a rest on Sabbath day? Because I'm Sabbath, I'm going to be this black time. Sometimes when I'm in a good mood, okay, you all seven day can go to. Sometimes when soldiers are killed or we have problems, I ah, forget it. Time long fight now, time long war. No stinking thing long Sabbath day, you play. You know, I was in that system. I persecuted a lot of seven day soldiers. So, we started a seven day church at Lolo Hall. We didn't. Kennel Job Casa did, he was a major. And he was assisted by Tapawa, he was our Tapawa. A great, great, great brother. Oh, I love him so much. He's the choir master 
it's a drill sergeant or oh, top of us just everybody everything so they they were able to have this very connection with the care centers at Arava and at Loloho. So night me got up about two, three in the morning, I was feeling really pain and these ladies were singing and singing and oh it's just, it's just, it just it's touched me. Really. I could have been dead. Because of the nerve issues with me, I didn't know how to stand up. Big Plarop, Egolong Brain Blood Me was damaged. That's why my eyes, I'm a walking wounded soldier, you know, so. So they medevaced me to Australia for, for sur surgical operations. This was in 94. So 95, something happened. The government under Sir Julius only Rosen Pies Wing thing, word of no confidence. They wanted that mine to open immediately, urgently, because Kina Valley work on slide got out. The government needed Panguna mine to open, like now, not tomorrow, now. So, only finding Jerry Simrock, you want to Panguna. Strategy to say, okay, we can hold ground, no problems. You can open Panguna mine. Everybody was saying, but we need outside help. We need outside help. Australia didn't want to help. Nobody wanted to help except real, real nasty people in Africa called Senlai. How the government in its wisdom wanted to go to a country that's a history of killing, murdering people. I have no idea. But the government did send, sign a contract with Sandline. They sent me to England. And I want to talk about how God had used me, raised me. So in 1995, they wanted somebody who's got the military ability, the military finesse, the professionalism, a young man, I was only 38, going 39 at that year. So this is a young boy. So said Julius, said, oh, there's no other guy. Jerry Sinrock, I want him to be a general. So I was accelerated 15 years ahead of time. 19th of October, 1995. That is the day very important in my life because 19th of October at half past seven in the morning, God put my father to rest, my biological father, Singero, died on the same hour that the government promoted me to be the general and commander of the PMGD, same hour. So I was promoted, bring it to general at nine o'clock in the morning. I told Sir Julius, I'm going home to bury my father and I'll come back and we'll work. So that's what happened. We come back, the government talk. Go to London. I'll send people from South Africa, they'll wait for you in London. You cut him open checkbook. Go sign him contract. Now come and kill him or people belong. Bougainville. Panguna, we want that mine open. And order. Order is an order. So I went to London for two weeks. We go stop now, we play. Straighten this black contract. And the bombs that, that we bought, by no got fight. One plus bomb tassel will come turmoil along here. One plus tassel. But you may smell him this black gas. All the oxygen will be denied from us and we're going to breathe carbon dioxide and which is going to fall. Those were the bombs that the government wanted to send. In fact, we bought them. Sunline meant business. They have one motto, no trace. No trace. During the Sandline inquiry, this was testified by the boys who were working with Sandline. 
no trace. We bought equipment, ballast by flight 25,000 feet over Sohano, 25,000 feet, the infrared body heat will pick up. There's about 200 people at this church. That information goes to the command post in less than five seconds. By all helicopter come, all soldiers by stop and tap yet long helicopter come down. I signed the contract for that. Me, my signature, my fake signature, my fake signature to kill the people of Bogota. Look here. It is crazy. It is madness. I was part of the system. Me, Jerry Singer. Han, blong all innocent people, blood blong all. Nearly on my hands as I speak to you today. As I speak to you today. So I went to London. We signed the contract. 120 mercenaries moved in into Port Mosby. We flew them to Webeck, secret training. Everything arrived. No problem. What happened? 97. I was not myself. Meeting him long, me going said long, Kupe. Until backside, backside through long Araba. Me going said, now me kiss him. Hamas bla Mary. One bla Mary Karen, pigling in a sting inside long cave. I went and poo. I started to reflect. I started to see all, uh, all Biari, me bla kill him all. I said, this really nice, wasted human beings. I picked up resistance who we were shot to the skull. I remember Hamas plus speedboat between Solomon Islands and, and Bougainville that I told the helicopter pilot, just kill them all. I started to reflect the real nasty, the dark side of war. That's why all young players invested on is that war is not good. It destroys humanity. It destroys happiness. It breaks up family. It it is it is really Satan's business. War. Don't don't be tempted. Please, Bogan Williams, don't go back and fight again. Wasted life. Wasted opportunities. I was part of that. So what happened in '97? I'm gonna finish shortly. I was thinking what to do. And Sir Julius called me and said, I want you to go to Philippines. Go and see the Philippines Army. I've already spoken to President uh, Mark Ramos. You go come up, sign him some black contract, and me like him some black fighter pilots. All by come now, kiss him all this black, let's take helicopter. We play by him along Russia, want them all send line. These are the helicopters that will come and just stop us all about. 50 feet and blow this church off. There's no war. The war changes from fighting on the ground up to the sky. Okay, it's a modern type of warfare. Waste him slowly around long, long rot. Until that's will come to shoot him, shoot him, shoot him, kill him. Men or adults all they're gonna clean up. So there were no attack helicopter pilots, so I went to Philippines to sign a contract, another contract to kill. And I was staying in a hotel in Philippines called Dusit. And I said, now let me go back. I've got all the guns, I've got all the missiles, I've got send line. Now let me go back. First of April, we're going to operate. First of April, the first bomb will strike. Panguna, Nagabis, pump station. Kope, Supuru, he go down long. He go down long. Koromira, we start to wipe out that place first. For 20 kilometers, we're going to clean up the whole of the mine. Cleaning along chemical, and we can look for two kilometers where any bear is coming to shoot him. That's what so I was in the Philippines the first time in the name of Jesus. I'm telling you what I actually did. Never told this story before. Never. It's my story. 
It's not somebody's story. It is my story and mine alone. You know, it takes a lot of courage. I'm a general. I live like a king. 20 bodyguards have access to helicopters. Highest paid departmental head. I had patrol boats. I had whatever to my disposal. I tell soldiers to go down, lie down, they lie down. They don't come up until I tell them to come up. Go stand up now, look him, stand this up. Tell me, talk, come back, you can come. They'll still look at the stuff because I said so. I'm the general. That's how powerful, that is how authoritative, that is the type of person that the general becomes. Because a general has to be a tough guy to lead men into war. And I was that tough guy. Physically, physically I was the tough guy. So Migos Tablong Philippines, Migos Tablong Philippines, and that night something happened. One security guard, my bodyguard from Philippines came and said, General, have you got some books to read? I said, yeah, I got, but, but why? What have you got in mind? Well, I got a real nice book. It's called People's Power. Oh, okay. Now you say, time money offer him long, give me a gift, you know, can talk now. Right? Okay, you see me come down, me read him. I spent two weeks in, about 10 days in Philippines. So this book, I put it next to my bed. Before I sleep, because before me not so carrying Bible around. Sim book here, now me read. It got more interesting, more interesting, because it was a graphical, Illustration of how Cardinal Sin, the Archbishop of Manila, was able to mobilize three million civilians in Manila to protest against a, a corrupt government under General Marcos. And the people held hands. Tamil people of protest against a corrupt president and only go. And there was a particular story that really moved me and I started crying. One black Mary and me para paraplegic. And me sleep on wheelchair. Name me dog. My life is finished. Just push me to the advancing tank and I can die for the name of freedom. See, Philippines had to be rescued to have a democratic government. They never had a democratic government. They had a military junta before many of you your time. So I started to see how the church was able to mobilize to kick a corrupt president out. So Elder, that was the book. God gave me that book. Between Philippines and Papua New Guinea matter, enough. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna throw St. Julius out of office. I'm gonna save the people of Papua Operation Rosen quick. You know, me man will write him all operations orders. What is this? Nothing. Me come up long. I got down on my knees in the hotel in Singapore. I said, Lord, give me that strength to do what I am supposed to, what I will do. The most impossible I will gonna do. I arrived, I wrote my operations orders. I got only five guys. Walter Enuma, Belden Nama, Michael David, Bola Rinagi, the current commander, Gilbert Toropo, Boy Blami, Mixi Molika. Now, with our gentlemen, we're going to change the course of the history of this country. We're going to say no to Sunlight. I'm going to say no. How about you, gentlemen, here? Yes, sir. Okay, come. They sign. Out of secrecy, not to tell anybody. Mixing patrol boat to come. The night, we talk him postman long on send line, tip spice. Come long office with me. You me got meeting. Already now long me plug come long. Everything was ready, set to go. 120 soldiers of send line already long come now. Direct straight to Rabaul, Rabaul straight into Arawa. Already now. 
I'm now. 16th of March 1997, Operation Russian quick started. I was not in the office. All people may be given all orders, please. I'm all sent land money come. Trapus him all, put them on a patrol boat. The patrol boat captain and one school room. I said, Max, you send this patrol boat to Australia until I tell you to come back. People, we put enough fuel, food, everything on the patrol boat and we we plug him head long send line, we plug carabus in him. Cut him from Sir Julius Chen. Sir Julius Chen long him and wet his tap. Okay, so I put send line on, on, on the boat. And the rest at the uh, Wewek, hands up him all, rouse him all, get a gun long all, carabus him all. Now, poke him all carabus long boost his tap. All security guard, bell long all big play, they were not even fit to be so. They came to kill people of Bolivia. I'm now operations on me go along radio NBC. I told the people of Papua New Guinea, I 86506, Brigadier General Jerry Simrock is now cancelling send line of president. I demand the Prime Minister, Defense Minister, Finance Minister to resign today. I'm cancelling everything and I'm taking send line out. I want people of Bougainville to be free. Amen. Enough. Enough killing. Enough suffering. Senseless. All killing one people, let me put me black kill him ten people long one. All killing five people, let me black kill him fifty. It's going crazy. 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 Let's put a stop. Let's give the people of Bougainville, the next generation, a peaceful future. Me call them radio. I announce television stations around the world and there's a military coup in Papua New Guinea. Let's go. There's a there's a general that's gone crazy and he's gonna take over the country. Only come, only come. I went on radio, I went to Governor General Seviva Korobi. I said, Seviva, I am cancelling this uh sideline contract today. I said, General, General, wait, I said no. You should have stopped it at the first place, Governor General. You knew it was correct. It was incorrect. You knew it was illegal, and you signed it. I'm just coming to tell you I cancelled all the all the contract. I said you've never been to Bougainville. Me talking, said Julius. You've never been to Bougainville. You haven't seen the people suffer. How long will they suffer for? No, the general is speaking. So me talking. Be talking about people. Take over. For 21 days. You see? You know, my job is what's gonna go. For freedom, it's worthless. For love, you know, as Christians today, when we sit back and when you see how Jesus has been so, you know, he came down, a rich man came down and he was very poor to make us rich in our wisdom and whatever. So I did what I did. And we Karabusi Mall, Send Line, we went. I rang the general manager of New Guinea, Moses Maladin. I said, Moses, where's the 747 Boeing? Where is it? He said, it's in Manila. Get it straight back now to Port Mosby. As I speak to you, turn that aircraft back. How much will our folk of friendship go down along? We work, haul him pass, put him on send line. Ago. As soon as the Boeing arrived from Manila to Port Mosby, I told them, refill it, change the crew, ready to take these people out. We'll send them at gunpoint. Come down long Mosby, gunpoint. You go inside and I told the bosses, you get out of this country and we don't, don't think of even coming back. Next time you come back, <coughs> just go. Came here for the wrong reasons. Just to make money for the blood of the people. So, That's why operations named Lomi is Operation Rosy. Rousing quick hurry, not one or two, no, no, that's a rouse. So I moved them out. Tim Spicer was out 
about 200 kilometers out of uh, here. So Mitoki Mall. This is when we come back and by court. And by court. So Tim Spicer came back. And I said, Sir Julius, resign. Resign. You're a crap uh, Prime Minister. Now all I come to rebuild Nataka Mister. These guys are all, all corrupted. It's the money. The money was more important than the lives of the people. So I shut down the government. 21 days, me mobilizing all students, all settlements, all public servants, all policemen, all soldiers, put them at parliament until Sir Julius, Mate Sejape, Defense Minister, want them, Chris Havet, to resign. Or step aside, and they did. They did. They did. But they removed me on the 17th. They immediately tell me go along radio. Next day they removed me, but I was removed, but I was still in control. Still in control. I know what power is. I know how to manipulate power. Because I wanted every sand line out and then caught my camera. So after me rose him sand line, I'll make go along police name to arrest me. Arrest me. Arrest me. So they arrested me. And they charged me. 1997. So court, State versus Jerry Rock is one of the longest court in the history of uh, I'm the first general in the Commonwealth of Nations to say no to a government. No. Because I hate to follow orders from a corrupt government. A government that who thinks of money, money, money. Okay. So only charging me. And I went through court case. 2004. 2004. Last case. We went up to Justice Katie Davani. Prosecution on one side. Defense, my lawyer and me on the other side. Me to place it on the West, uh, West the accused, General Singer. Talk here. Go along witness box. So me go sit down along witness box. Everywhere I was near, all the newspapers, media, everybody was watching me. Me sit down on some trouble, man. Me go court, to go come seven years. You know, one year, seven years. I lost everything. My status, my prestige, my morale, my money. I lost everything. But it's okay. Being a leader, you must be prepared to lose. Because God has never left you. Our God has never forsaken you. That's why we're here today worshiping one man alone. That's why today, your brothers and sisters, I am not ashamed to preach about Jesus. The same Jesus that you're worshiping. The same Jesus that I'm worshiping. So today I'm talking about how Jesus, how God has used my life. And today, it's not about me. I want to talk about how Jesus used me. And we put Jesus up high. We lower ourselves. I don't really talk about myself. It's the first time in my life to come and bogan will to talk to you. After 20 years. So that's what I did. Justice Kathy Davani asked the prosecution. Prosecution, Your Honor. We now request for another 14 days of adjournment. We want to complete our file. The prosecutor, Thomas Elwin, before walking here. Defense, no defense talks, Your Honor. We don't agree to give them that. Okay, adjourn him, adjourn him in parliament, uh, adjourn him in court. So we had a short break, came back, came back. Now, Justice Katie Davani, me talking prosecutor. You had seven years. You had seven years to prosecute General Shiro. Now you want another two weeks. I'm giving you only one hour to rest, to complete your case. Only one hour. So we had a sort of judgment. We came back. The prosecution stood up and said, we don't have a case against General Shiro. <sighs> So after 14 days, Judgment Day. Judgment Day. 
Dari belum di stop dong, my, my wife is a professional banker. 18 years, she's got accounting background. West Bank. We talk to me, you stop, me go long court. <sighs> me go long court, me sit down and stop. And you know, this is what Justice Kevin, uh, Kathy Dawani said. For saving the lives of people of Bougainville. You said the speeches that didn't bring sex and so and so under sedition and treason. General Singh Rao, I find you not guilty. This blood all got a burden, long shoulder blood. I walked out. I walked out of the courtroom and people were thinking I'll, I'll go to jail for 25 years. Cameras were going. Many Bougainvilleans supported me, they came out. And then they asked me, how do you feel? I said, I said, my God gets the glory. For saving the lives of people of Bougainville, he gets the glory. I just walked Amen. away. My friends hit the news, ABC, Radio Australia, CNN, the Voice of the Pacific, Voice of America, they've gone crazy about the freedom because I made news for a lot of media people. They made money out of Jerry Simrock's news with Bowen. So, Migalong House, my lovely wife, never forget this, boiling white rice, open besta tin fish, we ate, we got down on our knees, and we praised God. This was it. My friends said, uh, we go meet at Lamana. You know all the big shots go and drink and party and plot about all sorts of things. No. So that's what I did. I was free. 2004. What happened? How did I become seven days with this? Well, very simple. My wife... Once upon a time was seven days went this way. She wanted to come back to church. And I, because I'm a Lutheran, I, I just hate to read seven day Adventist uh, literature. So I'm so long ABC shop, I'm so buy more book, I can't put him now. Time me check him go long walk. Me so read him all book. All gonna can can great controversy, me so read him long Ellen G. White and it was really playing in my mind. Is he doing the right thing or am I I'm missing out something? But this John Carter, eventualist John Carter came in 2012. Thousands of people came and I said, I said, told you people. I was only a driver because my wife wanted to be baptized again. So that night, that particular night on the Thursday night, me go now now, me put down long barrack, my phone was lost. This angel came out and Put him honey go on pipi at the same phone and to pap's phone lay I cried the whole night. I thought of my injuries, I thought of the women at Rumba, I thought of Tapawa, I thought of all the seven day Adventists. The one thing that I did as commander when I was Lutheran, before all seven day Adventists never go to church in the military barracks. When I became commander, I said, Ross him this blog with a law. From now on, Jerry Sinrock has authorized all Seventh-day Adventist members to use the military barracks chapel to go to church. Make him more than a From now on, no Seventh-day Adventist member will go and work on duty on Saturday except time of war. If there's no war, they on day off, it's the Sabbath day. No different than you know, all Sunday worshippers. So 2012, when I had my encounter with my angel, my wife and my children, so I cried, I cried. I looked at my life and I realized that I was valueless. I realized that God has blessed me so much, but I gave him back nothing, zero. I looked at Apostle Paul's life and how he was able to change a lot of people's life. He was the first Gentile to link up with the Jews. I started to study my Bible seriously and on that night, Friday, when John Carter asked for the altar call, my wife and I went. 
Mi pla ron dia, mi pla no bobat, mi pla ron na tan tambo meri brong sista brong em luki mi toki go ron long a. No Tony Kemu CPC president toki ma Carl Jack Pitfish in a little man big pitfish to em come long out the cold area big hole me. All no busy long how much pla thousand go long out the cold. All come separate me want em meri ego long na pla. All the devil will just come now, let's talk. All come holy me now. We'll start now, pray with them. Pray with them. We cry now, we cry now. I just, I just completely surrender. Oh! Hey! Hey! God, please. Me talk here, me talk. I was just completely, completely, completely saturated myself. I realized that it was my time now. Not to carry a rifle, but to carry the Bible to preach about Him. So what do I do today? I'm an elder with my wife, stewardship director. I'm the deputy chairman of the building board at Fowler. I've flown my own boys, six boys from Kakar Island. They're now in, in uh, for us to be a fully recognized church, we must build a, um, a branch church our church is nearly half your size. We're building this church out of faith. People are contributing kappa, cement, generator, timber. So I'm just encouraging you people here to worry about money. It is your prayer point on the Wednesday night, on the Friday night, every day you pray about some angels going to come and complete this church. Because I'm God bets him glory on this one. Today, my wife and I, our ministry, we're going on all the settlement churches, not all, many, to change big toilets to septic toilets. So you marry now, go long, bathroom long, foul air, you got ironing board, you got washing machine, I know washing machine, you got shower room, now you use him toilet finish, but you press him the water back up. Nice, we built that. We went to John Pundari's uh, church at 17 Mile. We built another four toilets for him. We came to 8 Mile, another four toilets. Replace him on pit toilets. Now we're building at Rainbow. We'll be ready mid-May. Two toilets for women, two for men, one shower of meats, plus a washing machine, plus a dressing table, nice big mirror, so that we stay and we really worship God in the truest sense, physically and spiritually. Kakar Island, 75,000 people. We also now have a church in my house, and a house on Kakar Island. We have our own independent ministry running, supporting Madang Manu's mission, and we're going to spread the word of God. In Kakar Island, 75,000 people, they are hungry for the word of God. Amen. Lutherans. 99% Lutheran, 0.000% seven day. We're gonna change that. We're gonna change that. And today it's really a blessing for me to come and just share this testimony with you people because today also me talk. The last day is Matthew 24. Families, nations are at war. Technology is coming. Jesus' timetable coming is very very short. I'm a military strategist and I know I know when there is trouble, I know what is happening. Jesus is coming shortly. I'm the first general in the Pacific to be a Seventh-day Adventist. No other general in the military is a Seventh-day Adventist. Amen. Not that it's important, but to continue to hold the testimony and to preach as most as uh, Paul did, Apostle Paul did, is the same model that I'm following. I am preaching about Jesus today. So may God bless you all and may our Heavenly Father continue to do wonders in your life. Let's enjoy freedom because freedom is guaranteed by God. Thank you very much. Amen.